You guys asked for a detailed production tutorial, so that's what I'm going to give you. I'll be going into depth from start to finish and all the ideas, methods, and tricks that you're supposed to use when making a track so that if you get stuck at any step, you'll know exactly why and how I did something. So make sure to like and subscribe with notifications on and check out the huge holiday sale on all my sample packs. Link in the description. You're not going to want to miss it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So for this video, I want to head into more of a future pop style, but these methods apply to most EDM genres. So if you happen to be a hyper pop country dubstep producer, don't worry, you can still use these tricks to make a banger track. For me, the best way to start a song is with the chords slash melody. Open up your favorite instrument plugin and start messing around with the bass line. If you copy the bass line and move it up exactly seven notes, this will give you what's called the fifth of the chord. But we still need to add what's known as the third of the chord, since typically chords have three notes to them. You can see for this one, if I were to place an E, it's in key, but it's a little close to the bass note. And the note F here sounds wrong and out of key in context when you play the other chords. So it's kind of clear that F sharp sounds the best right now, and that ends up creating a D major for us. Then just rinse and repeat for the rest of the chords and you've created a basic beginner chord progression. By the way, the ones I'm using for this video happen to be the most overused pop chords of all time, but will make it work through good sound design and good songwriting. From here, I want to start using these chords on different instruments and sounds. The first thought is to record me strumming these chords on a guitar, but you can use a synth pluck or some guitar VST if you don't have that option. To mix it, I add a bit of saturation to give it warmth and then cut the lows and some harsh frequencies that the distortion plugin added around 2800 hertz. Since there's almost no low end to the guitar, I'll add a bass line with the sub frequencies cut. The reason why I cut the sub frequencies here is so that when the drop comes in, it'll seem like the drop sub bass is bigger, rather than just cranking the EQ and the drop way too much and then leaving the sub in the verse normal. For this part, I'll also add a re space with a low pass on it to help add width and energy to the mix. This one also has the sub frequencies ducked, but not all the way because we don't want the verse to seem too weak at the same time. For the drums, I'm thinking that'll add something extra interesting in the drop, so the goal here is to add something simple for the verse to give a nice contrast to the song. In this case, I think a nice low hip hop kick would sound good here, and I'm not gonna make a big promo out of this, but the kick comes from my brand new exclusive kit that I actually just released, and I've got it on sale for the holidays along with all of my other packs, and if you wanna check it out, the support really means a ton to me. Next, I think I'm gonna use this short snare with no reverb on it because I like the dry sound to it. Now we need just a bit more ambient, so after adding this acoustic guitar from a Labs preset and filtering it, adding reverb and the Soothe plugin to remove some harsh frequencies, this is what we have so far. sounding pretty good, but it still needs more ambience, so for the background, I want something that isn't typical. After looking around, I found this weird cymatics loop and filtered it with the volume turned down, as well as adding another Labs pad with a ton of reverb on it. Then for the next eight bars, I wanna give the feeling of movement throughout the structure, so I stripped away the drums and left just the main instruments with some one-shots and whoosh sound effects to spice up the transition, that way we get a sense of progression, and then when the buildup starts, it really feels like the energy is building. Speaking of which, the main strategy for the buildup is to just add layers. Adding little things like short clap loops and consistent snare loops will help fill up the space and increase energy, and I know I say this a lot, but I feel like energy is really the most important aspect of a song. And then for the last half of the build-up drums, I added what I consider the main drum build, which in this case is just a marching snare roll, but the volume of it is right in the middle of the mix and the other drums are in the background. It also helps if you try to reintroduce drums from earlier in the song to make the build-up seem less random and more connected to the rest of the song. For the build-up's melodic elements, just keep playing the same instruments from before like guitars, pads, synths, etc. and then just cut everything on the last bar before the drop. In some cases, you can add a volume automation to mute everything including the reverb and that'll make the silence before the drop seem extra empty which ends up making the drop seem way bigger when it finally comes in. However, I would only recommend doing this if it matches the vibe of the track. If the song is something melodic with lots of ambient elements and you don't want to interrupt the atmosphere of the track that you've worked so hard making, just skip that step. For the effects, it's pretty straightforward. Make sure to add impacts and one shots at the beginning of the build, and then take those effects and reverse them towards the end of the build, as well as adding other risers and atmospheric loops. Now 
Next up is the drop. I always start my drops with some combination of the drums and bass line. Now these may seem like simple steps, but having the right samples in your drop can make or break how professional it sounds. Think of it like having really good lyrics with a good melody, but having a vocalist who can't sing. It's not going to do justice to the work you put in earlier. So to prove this, I made two identical drum loop patterns, but using different samples and you can really see the impact having high quality sounds makes. The first one seems like it lacks energy and almost seems annoyingly bad. Whereas the second one seems really big and wide. So to get started with these drop drums, I took a really heavy stomp kick from the EDM Production Bundle Volume 1. It's number 8 in the Future Bass section if you're interested. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been working on a track and you find that perfect snare sample? You put it into the song, you add the reverb, you add the distortion, you make it sit really nice in the mix, and then it just sounds like sh <laughs> Yeah, that's happened to me a lot. And like so many of my fallen brothers have struggled with before, we need a snare that doesn't sound like sh So let's look for one with a lot of tonal elements that we can distort to make a really gritty top end. I'm liking the grungy sound of this one, but it's gonna need a lot more to make it pop. So I threw on a quick fast distortion to make the higher frequencies have more harmonics, a transient shaping plugin for some punch, some EQs to shape more the timbre of the sound, an OTT to squash it a little since the transient is now extra loud after we added that transient shaping plugin, and a big reverb to give it space. And that'll really make the snare feels like it fits in the mix with all the other sounds, but still have that crunchy punch we're looking for. For the rides, I wanted a four on the floor type groove. Four on the floor just means that there's one drum sample for every beat on each bar. Also, adding a crash to the beginning of every four bars helps increase the energy when it hits. Make sure to also add impacts and downlifters, but be careful because these can really quickly overpower a mix, so just make sure to turn them down and keep them nice and leveled. With the drums done, I'll start working on the bass line. Since we have the gritty drums, it makes sense to have a gritty bass line. So find a preset or make one that has a lot of distortion and low end. The It Has Risen preset from my Vital Bank and the EDM Production Bundle is currently my favorite bass preset. You've probably heard it in like the last 10 of my videos, and here's why. For the effects, I always use the same rack for this preset. Here's a cool trick. Start by adding all the effects plugins you want, and when you're done, right-click on the mixer channel, hit file, and then save mixer track state as. Then whenever you want to load it into a new mixer channel for a different sound, just hit file and open mixer track state and select the one you saved. You can also click and drag the entire thing to different mixer tracks if you don't want to open any folders, and you can even do this for individual plugins as well. To get a fat deep boy, I'm using the deep boy preset from the same vital bank we used earlier and here's what makes it hit really hard. I made a second envelope within the plugin with a really short decay time and then applied it to the pitch at a low percentage which gives it this really punchy impact to the beginning. This also makes it easier to hear on laptops and phones that can't play low frequencies. Here's a quick sidechain mixing trick. When you make a sidechain, try using volume automations with a fruity balance or utility if you're in Ableton to have more control over the shape rather than using a kickstart or volume shaper. With those plugins, you won't be able to make separate unique sidechain shapes with unique patterns. So make one sidechain for the sub that's really aggressive and long, and then make a separate sidechain that's shorter for all the other sounds in your drop like the bass, synths, and leads. After you're done making the regular sidechain for one sound, if you want to add it to another, just add a new fruity balance to that mixer channel, right click on the volume, hit link to controller, select the automation clip you want to link the volume to, and make sure to remove conflicts. That way you don't have a million automation clips for one sidechain. Another quick trick is to extend the main sidechain and add a smaller dip, then crop both of them and use the big one whenever your kick hits and the smaller one whenever your snare hits. This will give just a tiny bit more room for your snare in the mix. And the reason we don't go all the way on this sidechain is that the snare doesn't really have a lot of bass or anything to cover that up, and so it just sounds like the song is ducking in volume for no reason. The next part for the chords is pretty straightforward. Since this song has such a rock vibe already, I'm gonna use a poppy style guitar, but normally you'd put super saws here. When adding super saws, I recommend having one layer as the main big super saw. This one should have a relatively low amount of voices and detune to really let the saw waves cut through the mix. Here's a general guideline for how you'd apply effects to that one. Then add another super saw that's higher an octave with a lot of voices, detune, and white noise, and this will help make it seem really energetic and wide. The effects for that one should look like this. Then finally add another super saw to give it character. This one should use different wavetables to give it somewhat of a unique sound rather than that classic super saw sound. And for that one, you can mix it pretty similarly to the main super saw. Just try cutting a bit more of the low end and have fun with the stereo width. 
For the leads, you can either make them follow the top note of your chords, or you can just make an entirely new melody. Really quick, this song is actually being used as an instrumental for a track with vocals, which is why the rest of the song has been so empty. That way we can give the acapella room to breathe and not get cluttered by a bunch of melodies going on at once. With that being said, here's how I made the vocal chops. I first took the unreleased acapella and threw it into SliceX, and just let the plugin chop the timestamps for me. Then I open up the piano roll and start clicking through it to find slices that I think sound cool. Then I start moving around those slices into a pattern while listening for melodies that pop out to me. A quick way of doing that is making a one bar pattern and duplicating it to the length of the full loop while making small variations to each bar but still keeping the main rhythm and flow of the first melody. Once you have that, you can export the whole loop and apply effects like pitching it up or down, changing the algorithm for pitching, applying distortion, reverb, compression, and EQing it to remove any harsh frequencies. With a little bit of practice, it should start to feel like a pretty straightforward process. And here's a really useful tip. Try exporting the entire background effects loop with the tempo and key labeled, and then save them into a folder so when you're working on a new track, you don't have to spend time adding them again. You can just drag in the whole loop, pitch it to the right key, and you're done. So with the drums, effects, bass line, leads, and chords done, all we have left to cover is the structuring of the entire song. We're trying to follow this structure order for the song, but you can always move things around to make it flow better depending on how long your track is. So I'm gonna copy everything after the first verse and paste it exactly one bar after the drop ends. Normally you'd wanna paste it directly after after the drop, but I wanted to include this guitar fill as a transition, which helps make the track more interesting and less repetitive. Now go through the entire song and add unique fills, one shots, and background elements for ear candy. Also try adding switch ups to the drums and using things like filters to highlight specific elements throughout the track. Just make sure to not overdo it. This video is already getting pretty long so I'll cover the final mix down and mastering process in another dedicated video for that, but for now you should be well on your way to having a banger track. Just make sure to be consistent and if you're ever feeling any writer's block, just take a break, go for a walk and enjoy life. Then when you're ready you can come back and focus on the parts of music that make you happy. You'll be much more productive that way. Now let's cut to the chase and hear this master piece we've cooked up.